Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. Where do cooks come from? Why are so many great cooks in New York from Mexico and from Puebla in particular? Why are almost all of the cooks in my kitchen from this little village in Puebla? Why am I wearing a silly hat? The answer to this and other questions to follow. In the 25 years or so that I've been working as a chef, I've come to realize that no one in my kitchen crew understands and appreciates the American dream better than a non-American. Frise, riette, petatou, followed by two anglais, special fish, pepper steak. I need a rush steak free, please. The Mexican cooks who work in my kitchen back in New York are some of the best in New York City. They work hard, cook brilliantly, and they're really the engine behind our French brasserie. I wanted to see where these guys come from. I wanted to discover where they get their stuff, especially Eddie Perez, my longtime sous chef and the backbone of Leal. Great guy, hardest working cook on the planet, and a close confidant and associate like all my cooks from Puebla, Mexico. I want somebody's mother to cook for me in Mexico. I don't care whose mother, your mother, his mother, somebody's mother. No, we're gonna have a good time, it's gonna be great. Hey, no problem, I can ride a donkey. So I'm heading off to Izucar de Matamoros, a small town south of Puebla City, to hook up with Eddie. He's gonna show me around his hometown, introduce me to his family, and show me how come he's such a good cook. Eddie, come on, Dada, give me a hug, you big hug. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect his mother here had something to do with it. Tell her I'm very happy to be here. My wife. What's everybody's name so I can remember them? Jacqueline. This is my daughter. Giselle. Lupe. Eddie saved up enough working as my sous chef to buy the house he grew up in and a small ranch nearby. He's got several days of festivities lined up for me. Story is the little kitchen. Cucina. Good. Cucina. Eddie takes me outside to show me where all the women in his family are preparing the evening meal. Looking good. Woo, banana, look. Banana. Oh, it's beautiful. Hi. In Mexico, outdoor kitchens are where they make the really good stuff. Apparently, the women do all the cooking. His mom, his wife, friends, neighbors, assorted babysitters all pitch in to make the big dinner. Looking good. I'm beginning to see where my guys back in New York get the relentless energy and technique. Hanging around these women all day, they must have learned everything through osmosis. I recognize my broiler man's face in a woman in Eddie's backyard. I say, wait a minute, is that Antonio's mom? And I'm right, it is his mom. I also learn that Isidoro's mom lives right across the street. And Eddie tells me that another cook's mom lives right next door. Aralo's mom. <laughs> While Antonio's mom makes tortillas until the cows come home, Others are making tamales, salsas, and God knows what else. Tortillas are like bread in Mexico. And they will accompany tonight's big meal, mole poblano served with turkey. Hey, that's for poblano. Uh, haven't killed the turkey yet. Unfortunately, I've been asked to kill the turkey. I'm sorry, my friend. Today is your day. Hey. Now, I typically don't kill my own poultry, but I guess it's high time I at least do it once myself. Okay, drink it up. The tradition is a jigger of mezcal before the deed offers more tender and flavorful turkey meat. And then down like this? No, no. Eddie's wife has to step in and show me the proper technique. Oh, man, okay. Proving that, once again, the women are really in charge here. Oh, I know it's for dinner. Never plucked anything before. This is a first for me. So much as an eyebrow. The turkey's then cut up into pieces and simmered for several hours. Oh, yeah, I recognize him. Well, 
the turkey is stewing, Eddie's wife, Laura, and her team of mole specialists are making the classic mole poblano. Essentially, a mixture of dried chiles, chocolate, red fried in oil, Platano. also bananas, vanilla, seeds from the roasted peppers, and some other spices ground up in a hand mill. Then everything gets put in a bucket and taken to the molina, the community mill, to get ground up into a smooth paste. The mole paste is added to broth from the turkey and simmers for several hours. These ladies rock. This is mole poblano. I have maybe a hundred different mole. But this is the really, really mole poblano. It's a nice color. And he's really carved out a little bit of heaven here, as far as I'm concerned. Kids running around the yard, great smells coming from the kitchen. He's got the right idea. At sunset, our big dinner of mole poblano is served. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, man. Look at that. Mole poblano, classic. A relay team of like five, six, seven, nine women. I almost feel guilty that all these people have been slaving away all day while I just sit back and enjoy the fruits of their labor. It's incredible sauce. The mole poblano is fabulous. A subtle mixture of bananas, peppers, chocolate, sprinkled with toasted sesame seeds. This is enchiladas. And as if the mole poblano isn't a meal in itself, out comes a platter of turkey enchiladas made with fresh corn tortillas, a little cheese, some mole, topped with some crunchy onions and radishes. Oh, the enchiladas are great. Now it's all becoming clear to me where Eddie gets his chops. A family like this, yeah. cooking is in his blood. Bravo, this was an amazing effort everyone did. Fantastic. I'm really digging my stay in Puebla. The people are warm and friendly and the food is hearty. Eddie decides to show me around town where we'll hook up with his buddy, Martin, a man who's determined to show us a few Mexican delicacies that even Eddie hasn't tried. Worms and ant eggs. Martin has arranged this meal at one of the town's biggest hotel restaurants. You know what I need? I'm in a big, fancy hotel. I need a big, fancy hotel margarita. That's what I need. Now, Martin has had worms before and remembers them fondly. Eddie's never had them, which unnerves me a bit. So, what do they taste like? They taste like, uh, at the beginning, a little bit like pork skin because they are very well done fried. Okay, I like pork skin. Okay, so they're crispy at the beginning, and then they have a special flavor. I cannot describe it because it's so, so special. I hear the word special, I get very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you prepare ant eggs, you ask? Well, you saute some chopped onions and butter, add some jalapenos and chopped fresh bay leaf, and then mix in the fresh ant eggs. It's that simple. A perfect quick dish for those late nights home from work when the husband and kids are yapping for their dinner. And for the worms, first get some fresh maguey worms, make sure they're fresh, and give them a quick fry. I'm told that we're lucky because even though it's not quite worm season, they were able to pull some strings and wrangle some up. Remember, presentation is half the battle. So carve something pretty to put on top. You nervous? I could do this. You ever eat a Twinkie? You know a Twinkie? It's yeah. like crunchy on the end, little on the outside, soft, soft in the middle. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, disgusting. This is disgusting. <laughs> it's good, man. I'm gonna like this, I know that. Or I'm like, Eddie, you eat this all the time, right? He says, oh, no, I've never had this. It looks disgusting. <laughs> OK, you get some worms. Mm -hmm. OK, now it's some guacamole, green salsa for me, mainly. Mm -hmm. Little salt, drops of lime. All right, here we go. So what do you think, Eddie, verde or uh, chipotle? Uh, chipotle. For me, I like chipotle. She's OK, I'm going to listen to my sous chef. Eddie, come on, man, you're scaring me. Mm -hmm. There's a lime at all of the years here. Mmm. Mmm. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's good, huh? Yeah. I told you. Because it's like pork skin. Right. Right. You get that same crispy, crunchy. 
Now moving on to the ant eggs. Now here's what I want to know. How come the ant eggs are bigger than the ant? This is big ants. All right. They know how to cook it. Don't tell me till after I eat this. It's mad good, eh? Yeah, I like this. That's perfectly good. Yeah. 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 Worms, I like the worms better. OK. Yeah, you were right. They're okay. good. Now we're talking. The ant eggs themselves have a slightly woody, almost uh, fungal aftertaste, meaning, you know, mushroom-like. These, on the other hand, it's all about texture and uh, not much flavor. There is sort of a slightly smoky background, but basically the salsas and the guacamole override the worm. Both of them are good. I'll tell you, you could serve this as a party dip. No one, and, and as long as no one knew what it was, everyone would say, oh, it's fabulous. And just between you and me, cook yes. to cook, don't tell anybody, but I'll tell you something, the worms were the best part of that meal. Yeah. At the time, the worms weren't so bad, but to be honest, I would not revisit the experience. Our jaunt through town continues well into the evening. Martin steers us all towards what is commonly known as a pulcaria, a kind of makeshift dive bar where one can sample the local poison. Yes. In one of my favorite books, Under the Volcano, the alcoholic hero spends a lot of time in Pulcarias drinking the local brew. It sounded atmospheric and wonderful and a little bit scary, just the sort of thing I wanted to do while in Mexico. That's the stuff, huh? Pulque is the sap from the maguey cactus, fermented in a bathtub someplace till it gets alcoholic. It's a classic low-rent daytime drink for poor Mexicans, and it goes back to the Aztecs. And you can put some uh, soda in, or natural, whatever. I think let's go natural. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm famous for being a... Cheers, guys. Pulque tastes good, but it goes down hard. The consistency is tricky, tricky, tricky. It's like drinking a bucket of snot. Yeah, let's uh, take our little pail over. The plastic bucket, by the way, does not add to the appetizing nature of the mucus. You see? Right. Kind of sticky. Martin keeps dipping his finger in and then pulling it out and explaining how it's got to be gooey like this. I was not ready to see that. Everybody has to go all the way like a chain. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I'd expect, you know, a couple of guys with some bandoleros and maybe some dogs and chickens, but, but poke is good and it is suitably low rent. It's down an alley. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> the taste hangs with you. So all the way back into town, I'm keeping in mind that, you know, underneath the pulque, I have a nice solid base of ant eggs and worms. I puked like a hero all night long. Yeah, Eddie has really kept our agenda full here in Pueblo. Okay, we're in the uh, Atlisco Market. Yeah, the Atlisco Market. You see what are bed. we doing? We're shopping for the party. Yeah, we're shopping Eddie's for the party. Eddie's throwing a big blast at his ranch tonight. Yes. Everybody's coming. We're here to shop. First up, ingredients for a fruit salad. Papaya. So who made this list? You make this list. Yeah, I make this yeah, list. The sous chef makes the water uh, list. Yeah, make it over, yeah. At the restaurant and in life. It's just like Leal, my sous chef and me side by side foraging for the day's ingredients. You can't ask for much more than this. That's really pretty. The zucchini blossom quesadillas are just too good to pass up. Yeah, let's have one of those. They start with a ball of raw tortilla dough pressed flat. Zucchini blossoms, it looks like just a little bit of pork fat. Yeah, all right, flavor, sabor. Uh, quesillo, fresh uh, cheese. That is beautiful. And a quesadilla. Man, that, that's just like so cool. This is my idea of a market. Great stuff to buy, great stuff to eat. It's my idea of breakfast. So our shopping's done. Yeah, the shopping's done. All right, next we uh, prep for the party. But before we leave, Eddie tells me no trip to the ranch is complete without the proper attire. Just right. You find your hat? I found. Looking good, looking good. You styling now. I'm ready for the ranch. Eddie has a house and ranch near Izucar to Matamoros, and he visits one or two times a year. So you live the house, and you're in the center. Here, you're a part of it. All right, Tony. Ready, all. Right. It's a pretty big spread, 
I think he's got almost the whole mountain. The number of animals he has, turkeys, goats, chickens, roosters, horses. It's a veritable zoo. Still reeling from the after effects of the pulcheria, Eddie and I ease into a supervisory role, overseeing the hive of activity prepping for tonight's fiesta. We have saute uh, sitting up right over there, and we have the grill and uh, roast station. Yeah. Over there, the entremetier uh, making uh, rice. Eddie's in-house mole expert and resident tortilla maker are busy preparing arroz. Rice, the mixture of tomato puree, chicken stock, and fresh cilantro. And of course, tortillas, hot off the comal. I volunteered. I mean, anytime I'm ready to start working. What? Yeah, you want me to cut fruit, peel potatoes, dig a hole? Eddie takes me up on my offer, and we get to work on the fruit salad. Yeah, it's just like going out, right, Eddie? I feel like I'm working prep. All right, I've worked enough. I think it's time to check on our good friend, Mr. Barbecue Goat. Oh, that's it right here. Oh, nice. Here's some cooking the men actually do, the grilling. Eddie's ranch hands begin preparation for tonight's main entree. Goat's head soup. Onion, dumming, tomato. Oh, it has some this. Bay leaf. Bay leaf. Tripes. And a head. Goat's head soup. This is going to be cooked on the open fire, right in the pit there. Actually, Eddie's made this at the, at the restaurant for the family. It's really good. Really good. Not a single piece of this animal goes to waste. To cook the goat, they dig a pit, they fill it with wood and stones and charcoal. That's hot. That's real hot. Oh, I want one of these for Leal. <laughs> Throw the busboys in. They put in the goat's head soup on the bottom, right on the coals, with a layer of avocado leaves. Oh, the heads go right in on top of the leaves. i never seen this before. This is really cool. They also put in a stuffed stomach with a sort of blood and spice and herb stuffing with a little onion and garlic. I'm liking this, man. This is very cool. It's not like my barbecue. Oh, and on top go the goats, whole, still on the bone, butterflied for even cooking. This is really cool. I feel privileged to see this. A wet mat goes on top, and the whole thing is covered up with sand and dirt and left there for about three and a half to four hours. I saw this scene in Goodfellas. When I die, do that to me. No, actually, I'd be no good. I'd be tough. Eddie tells me we're going to have ice cream at the party. Somehow, I don't think this means a trip to Baskin Robbins. His uncle sends someone along to the party to make a lime sorbet, the old way. An old man shows up with a wooden bucket, fresh fruit sugar, some ice, some salt, and goes to work, hand cranking nonstop for a solid hour. So they do it at Ben and Jerry's, right? Maybe not. Oh man, that's good. Number one. It's spectacular. I never thought I'd be sitting in a mountain in Mexico, a ranch, wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, drinking Mexican beer with my good friend Eddie. Four hours later, Eddie and I return to the pit. The goat meat is good. I've been told to expect tough and stringy. It isn't. It's actually very tender and really, really tasty. See, there's a consomme. Look at the consomme. Next, they pull out the goat's head soup, stomach and heads, cooked to perfection and ready to eat. It's going to be great and a lot of liquor. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of beer, a lot of everything. The party has officially begun, and we're about to be served this long-awaited meal. We're eating, man. Huh? The first course, goat's head soup. I've been waiting for this. It's my goat's head soup. Goat's head soup, yeah. All right. Oh. The soup is fantastic, just great. A little bit of tripe, a little bit of meat, a little bit of head, a little bit of tongue, a little bit of this and that. It's superb. One of the best things I've eaten in all of Mexico. Off the record, on the record, this soup is incredible. All that good juice running into it uh, doesn't get much more magic than this. Great music, great company. What else is there? Ooh. 
So I'm having a grand old time, kicking back with my cerveza, enjoying the live entertainment. And then everything comes to a grinding halt. After shoveling down several portions of goat innards, I'm asked to jump on top of Trigger here and prance around in front of all of Eddie's family and friends. I feel like an idiot, and this can't be good for my digestion. In fact, I think Trigger here has gas. So aside from the fact that I just made a complete ass of myself, I have only gratitude and admiration for Eddie and his family, who worked like Trojans for days feeding me. I'm eternally in their debt. Puebla, Mexico, where the good cooks are from. <laughs>